Hi everybody. Now I have been authorized, or most likely more forced, into making a tutorial video for Demorado channel on Civ 5 because he's looking at getting it. So that looks gonna be great. This is mostly for his benefit than just YouTube's benefit. So what I'm doing is that I've picked a random leader, I have picked a random map type, I picked a map of Tiny, which gives me four players in eight cities, and the difficulty level of the Warlord, which is easy. The standard game pace is standard. As you can see, this is also the advanced area where you can change just whatever you want. Victory types, civilizations, and advanced options, but we're going to have none of that because we're going to mostly concentrate just on the beginnings of the um, game. If anything, this should just be like a kickstarter for any of you newcomers that also choose to watch this video. So let's get going. Ooh, Portugal. Blessings be upon you, most gracious Queen Maria, protector and sovereign of the Portuguese people. As the first ever Queen Regnant of Portugal, it was your wise stewardship that protected the royal court from the incursions of Napoleon, establishing a safe haven in Brazil to preserve the integrity of Portuguese rule. Despite struggling with illness throughout your reign, your efforts to ensure Portugal's close cooperation with Brazil are credited with helping that state gain its eventual independence. And for this, you will always be admired and respected by the people of both nations. O oh, noble and pious queen, will you once again guide the kingdom of Portugal in the spirit of cooperation and prosperity? Will you establish a new legacy, one that will surpass all those who came before you? Can you build a civilization that will stand the test of time? Now, every sieve starts off like that. We're playing as the Portuguese for this, and Research University grants twice as much gold for Portugal in trade routes. No, and a th You know, it's using its land. When it goes to town, it's just interesting. So let's begin. First thing we need to do, absolutely the first thing to do, and I recommend you do this without hesitation. Okay, that's good is that you find a city, right? You do not move it, try, do not move to try and find a better place or anything like that. Just find it where it is, and that could be the starting off point, right? Also, later on, if you ever feel like it, or even as you find a city, you can go to the city screen, thank you very much. They also pop up every now and then, I have turned them off, but they can also help you grant the machine. But you can also name it by clicking on the edit here, name it whatever you want. But for the time being, the, that name will go, that will do. It also grants you other access to information to like, food, culture, science, goal, what this building and everything like that. But like that's science, and that's what we're getting for science, which will eventually be important. That's our goal, that's our trade routes, that's our happiness. That's our progress to our next golden age, which is what you need happiness for. Cultural and its income, tourism, and faith. Now what I normally do, and some people might be different, I put this on Auto Explore, alright? And it will normally go around by, ooh, we're next to the coast, that's good. I Thank you. We'll build a monument, that's like the first thing you do, thanks. And for this, I usually pick pottery, but it also depends on other circumstances and like what you have around you and all that type of stuff. For instance, we do have a lot of forests, but we do have a lot of free land apart from that stand there. So let's build pottery, thank you. And we'll go to the next turn. So that's what I usually do. And that's normally what happens. Now, if you're a very impatient person, Civ 5 probably isn't your game, as it is a slow starting game until things pick up, unless you put it on a harder difficulty of course, in which case barbarians will attack you in drones, and you will probably become overwhelmed with barbarians and ooh, wine. There's a lot of wine. And cotton silk. Silk, wine, stone. 
marble. This is actually a good area. I want to continue this map. Anyway, we keep going until the first few turns or so is just basically you clicking next turn, probably checking some stuff out. Which next turn I'll actually show you. Found ancient ruins. That's brilliant. Okay. Now we're also the north of the map by the look of that, because we have tundra and snow, so we're up in the north and I don't know what map out we're playing as. Science hasn't gone up because we actually haven't built any science things, buildings, or have a great scientist or whatever. But we do have gold income and we have 45 towards our next golden age. That will take 15 turns the way this is going to get our policy, which actually helps and can grant extra money, tag bonuses, stuff like that. But I'm going to continue with this. This is what we're researching at the moment. Right, this can be clicked on and you can change it to whatever you want. Great person list, that can show progress to your next great person or whatever. Resources, which you have access to as resources. Your city list, see, and they give you other tabs, stuff like that. And unit list, and so far we only have a warrior that's on auto explore. But let's keep that on research, that's probably what you're only really going to do, and this is starting into events of it. And like this. World well, Congress, but that's not important at the moment. Victory progress, they can just see how you're going. Oh, you're up. Victory. Demographics, where you stand on the world. For instance, right now we have the most population of one cut. That's actually the average, so everyone's the first. Crop yield, we've got four. That's the average, so, you know, it's great. Manufactured goods, we're top. That's good. GNP for second, land for first, but that's generally everyone at the moment. Soldiers third, so someone's actually invested in either better units or something like that, so you never know. Approval and literacy. That's that's demographics. I usually check that a lot. And if you're new and you do want to check with your advisors, or well, what's a good idea and what's not, you can always go to the advisor council. For instance, the military advisor tells me to research archery, discover lands, consider what our enemies are doing. Consider what our enemies might be planning, but not too much. And that's that. So, I've never actually checked out advi my advisors this early in the game. And then, later on, eventually you'll get an espionage view. Your social policies, thank you very much. Right. Which you can later pick ideology for. There's cultural. I'm gonna turn that off before I make the next tutorial video. As well as diplomacy, where you can interact with other civilizations, check the World Congress out, as well as the other different one views, which just tell you your deals and who's your friend and who's not. We got 50 gold for the Empire for discovering that now. This bar tells us the population. Well, the size of it. And this tells us how long until it goes up. Say it will go to do. And one turn until our construction project is built. The star means it's the capital. That's desert. Grassland. Our capital city has finished building a unit. Thank you. Now, what I usually do is build a scout. Off that. And then as soon as that happens, we normally come. Shall the clay say to him that fashion of it? What makest thou? And then you discover new research. Yay! We discover new research. It's ooh, pottery. And then it gives you a quote from your famous person, a book, or whatever. The same happens when you build wonders. And then it tells you what it does, which is fantastic. Then we're going to build a new one. Can you believe that? A new one? Oh my god! We're going to do. Probably archery at the moment. Go archery. Most of it's just guessing, but basically you have to do the first four things. That's just compulsory. The first four things, which I can actually show you from the tech tree. These four things are compulsory for anything else in this game to be discovered. So it basically, don't even concentrate on that type of stuff. If you do go for poetry, don't go for sailing or calendar or riding. Just concentrate on either animal husbandry, which would be good if you have, well, it shows you if you have horses, if you pick that. But if you have things that require a camp,